As long as you carry on thinking that I lost my leg, now what am I going to do? I'm depressed, I'm sitting at home. For as long as you are thinking that, you are not going to be helped. You went through a divorce, very big hardship. Sometimes for no reason, a man will come, he met a girl in the nightclub and he comes home and he says, I divorce you because you know what? I met Susan. Well, to hell with him and his Susie. Allah saved you from something bigger. Pick yourself up, stop pitying yourself and stop wanting to harm him. It's over. Allah will deal with him for as long as you want to pay back and revenge and retaliate. You're harming yourself. You're not going to survive that hardship. It's going to affect you. So to survive that type of a hardship, get on with life, get up and move. Forget about that. That was a dirty episode, a bad episode. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, guide us. So you need to get up and move on. And guess what? Perhaps Abdullahi will marry you. MashaAllah. And what happened after that? You think to yourself, Oh Allah, I thank you that I went through this divorce. Because had I not gone through the divorce, I wouldn't have married such an honorable man. Flawless. Flawless meaning in the eyes of human beings sometimes. I know of many cases. Today, I spoke to someone. Today. And this person was telling me, Wallahi, my first marriage, before my first marriage, I used to make dua. Oh Allah, give me a husband like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. And so many things I had a list. And I got married and I had the worst condition. And I tried and tried my best, but it ended in divorce. And after divorce, I went through hardship because there is stigma of the family and stigma of the others and the people because you have a child, they are pulling tug of war and so on. And it is very difficult, so hard. And I kept on making dua to Allah. Oh Allah, I know you have a plan for me. I know there is something. And I kept on trying. Now some people, they go through one divorce and that's it. You know what? I'm not going to get married again because men are bad or women are bad. No way. You mean you're trying to tell me I'm bad? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. <laughs> They are beautiful people, lovely souls. There are so many. And then she told me today, she says, Wallahi, I want you to know that I married again. And it was a miracle of Allah. Every dua I made was answered. Amazing. And you know what I said? Allah wanted you to appreciate the man he had always chosen for you by making you go through someone who was not a good person for you to know what good and bad is all about. You don't know heat. You don't know what hot is, right? Until you know what is cold, subhanallah. And you don't know cold and cool until you know what is hot, subhanallah. No, sorry, I'm talking of heat. I'm not talking of hot as in hot, you know. So the hardships, the difficulties you are going to go through, Allah makes you go through difficulties so you can recognize ease. And this is why, wallahi, powerful means of survival of hardship is when the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, no matter what you are going through or you have, unzuru ila man huwa dunakum. Look at those who are worse than you. You lost your husband, he passed away in a car crash. Or you lost your wife, he passed away, she passed away in a car crash or sickness or illness, so on, so forth. Murder, armed robbery, it happens in many countries where so unsafe people come in and begin to shoot and people lose their lives. And guess what? Look at someone who lost not only the husband, but three children together with the husband. And they're still surviving. Yes, you have times when you will break down, you start crying. Crying is a means, a very healthy way of surviving your hardship. It's not wrong to cry. Cry. It's natural. It's human nature. Even the Prophet ﷺ shed a tear when Ibrahim, his son, was in his hands, passed away. 
The Sahaba radiallahu anhum asked him, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is this? You know, meaning you're, you're supposed to be strong. He answered this hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari, a beautiful response. He says, Innama hiya rahmatun ja'alaha Allahu fi ibadihi ruhama. This is indeed mercy that Allah has put in the hearts of those who are merciful. You feel you lost your child. Subhanallah, may Allah grant that child goodness, but may Allah make the child a means of your entry into paradise. How? Because you will bear patience. When you bore the patience, Allah rewarded you. Indeed, we grant those who bear patience a reward without a limit, unlimited reward. You lost your child, you were patient. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. You cried a bit sometimes. You missed your child once in a while. And as time passed, obviously it faded a little bit because Allah creates occasions and Allah creates things that you will go through that make you forget about a difficulty you were in in the past. You went through a difficult divorce, but now you're married so happily, you forgot about what happened there. So when you lost the child or you lost someone and you bore the patience and you then met with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after you passed away, Allah tells you, do you know what? You bore so much of patience. You were happy with my decree. That means you believed I was God Almighty. Allahu Akbar. It's a sign of belief. This is why in Islam, in your declaration of Iman, Allah has kept in it a clause that will help you survive your hardship. What is the clause? Good and bad fate, I declare and I believe it is from Allah alone. What does that mean? When something good happens, I declare it's from Allah. When something bad happens, I declare it's from Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. In order for us to be able to go through or to survive the hardship. That's why Allah kept one of the clauses of belief, one of the tenets that I declare, I believe in fate, taqdeer, I believe it. Once you say, oh Allah, you took my child away or you took my leg away or you took something away from me or you did this to me, oh Allah, but I surrender to your decree and help me to be patient, help me overcome it, replace it for me with something better. The Prophet ﷺ, when something bad used to happen, he used to say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Indeed, we belong to Allah. We are going to all return to him. There can be nothing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept everlasting on this earth. And then the Prophet ﷺ taught us to say, Allahumma ajirni fi musibati, O Allah. You know, one is you are asking for the help of Allah. You are asking for a recompense, a reward from Allah, recompense from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Help to go through the difficulty and the hardship, O Allah. Grant me that and wakhlufli khayram min. O oh Allah, grant me in return something better than what you took away. Something better than what you took away. These are supplications. There are so many supplications that will help you survive your hardship. Many supplications, learn them. And go and see the stories of others. I mentioned moments ago, look at those who are worse than you. Take a look at people who were born in refugee camps. Today they are 11 years old, 12 years old. Take a look at those whose weddings happened in refugee camps. Take a look at those, subhanallah, who gave birth while they were fleeing bombing and so many other things. We have tasted zero compared to them. They are going through hardship. May Allah make it easy for them. And that brings me to another point. To survive your hardship, pray for others who are going through hardship. Feel for others and it will help you. Because when you raise your hands and you say, Oh Allah, help the suffering brothers and sisters in Syria, those who have lost their homes in Iraq, in Afghanistan, 
those who are suffering in Bangladesh, in Burma, those who are struggling in Sudan or in Somalia, wherever else it may be, those who are struggling in any country and you really think about them and you really raise your hands and pray for them. You don't need to put up a status on Facebook about it. You don't. That's not a requirement of Allah and his Rasul. The world does not need to know what you've done about the people suffering across the globe. I always get this. People say, Shaykh, why are you so quiet about what's happening in the world? Show me a verse of the Quran that tells me that I need to put up a status on Facebook. Show me a, a hadith that tells me that I need to use Twitter to tell the world what I, what I think. No, people are doing a lot of that. There are some people who are activists. Let them do all of that. Not everyone needs to specialize in the same thing, but everyone needs to do something about it. You have to. What I did, you don't need to know. In fact, I should hide it from you. That's the sunnah. And I may not be able to do what you've done, but guess what? I may have just done something you cannot do. Subhanallah. In fact, sometimes it becomes more of a hardship. Now I'm not talking of a global level. I'm talking of personal hardship. It becomes more of a hardship when you advertise what you're going through. Hey, I have a toothache and you put it on Facebook and you take a picture of your tooth and you put it on Instagram. I have a toothache. Can you see what's going on? That's not going to help you go through hardship. Wallahi, it will create a greater headache. You only had a toothache. Now you have a headache because your husband saw someone commenting nice teeth. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So you need to think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's way. I said, learn the supplications. Look at those who are struggling more. When you make dua for them, the angels actually make dua for you. If I say, oh Allah, help those who are suffering. The angels say, and oh Allah, help this person as well. Thank you.